Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. On today's episode, we're talking about WrestleMania 40 and the main event plans. Of course, last night, the huge WrestleMania kickoff show added more intrigue to the equation. We're going to continue to speculate all over that. We've got um, another story, a much more real world situation here with uh, more allegations against Vince McMahon uh, and WWE superstars reacting uh, both from the past and the present. So we'll talk a little bit about that. we got a SmackDown preview, and we're going to be answering a bunch of your questions today. Of course, Larson, first up, we're going to talk about that WrestleMania kickoff show and what everybody is saying. We just I just mentioned, the, you mentioned this to you off camera real quick. In discussing this, one of the more interesting things is understanding just how close to the vest WWE has been able to keep this. It's been kind of entertaining <laughs> watching... Certain wrestling journalists, certain wrestling media figures kind of run circles around what they think is going to happen because they haven't been able to figure it out. They're not getting the info from their usual sources on the inside. And so they're playing catch up like the rest of us. Yeah. Or, or, you know, as we saw with the Justin Barrasso uh, uh, situation before Royal Rumble. It's got. It's probably harder to kind of delineate between information that you can rely on and possible misinformation. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And because of that, we talked about this. I think on Wednesday's show. I think where now you got to try to to create a narrative based on the information you're given and mm-hmm. trying to 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 put together at times contradictory information to a cohesive uh, thought and narrative is kind of tough given that. It's, it's all over the place, and while it seems like we're gonna, we're getting Cody and Rowan as the main event of WrestleMania, mm-hmm, yeah, you you can't say that for sure at this point. That's not at least partially up in the air too. So, yeah, rumor, speculation, it's running rampant after last night's WrestleMania 40 kickoff press event, and yeah, well, I just mentioned it seems like Roman versus Cody is set as the main event. They had the graphic. Triple H had the thing up yesterday after the thing. The graphic too. Seems to be some uncertainty as to whether that will remain the match or what twists and turns will happen in the build up to it. So, in the latest wrestling was ever newsletter, Dave Meltzer speculated the following. Those other guys. Quote, the belief is that Rollins will defend World Heavyweight Championship, of course, against the winner of the men's chamber match on that same show, not defending the World Heavyweight Championship after the men's chamber match. Right. But such a match was not announced. It's not been announced. And it couldn't be announced since the tease was Rhodes versus Rollins. Announcing the match doesn't make sense until this coming week. The press conference also ended with the idea of Reigns and Rock versus Rhodes and Rollins tag team match, which could be on uh, day one at Mania. Rock ended up going heel on Rhodes, slapping him in the face after an argument about families and siding with Reigns. Rollins was out there at the time and ended up backing up Rhodes. Continues from a sponsorship and viewer standpoint, the Rock Wrestling didn't ha- uh, didn't have to be for the title, even a singles match. But the singles match for the title would put the title over the most and make the match bigger. Originally, we were told that the match would take place down the line, but there have been so many contradictions, and it's hard to say what is and isn't real and what would happen next. Pause right there. That is the most realist statement I've heard from Meltzer from anybody on this. Originally, we were t- uh, originally we were told that the match would take place down the line, but there have been so many contradictions, and it's hard to say what is and isn't real and what would happen next. For Dave Meltzer to admit that, you know that WWE is playing this the right way. Everybody who's like, oh, man, I don't like spoilers, they're keenly aware of that. Yeah. And only the people involved who have a vested interest in that information staying quiet are in the know. Seemingly. Uh, Dave continues. But whether this plays out or not, the announcers were very much playing up the idea that Johnson is on the board and buddies with Nick Khan, and he's essentially Cody's boss. When Johnson slapped Rhodes, it was portrayed as if Cody couldn't wouldn't retaliate because of hitting 
his butt. Well, he was also restrained. Like that's you know, yeah, Triple yeah. H got in between him and and, yeah, and yeah, Rock. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not yeah. like Cody tried to leapfrog uh, Triple H. No, but no, uh, no. but it wasn't he, like he also tried to hit Rock with the crossroads on stage. No, right, exactly. But he did. He did step up. He um, did. So uh, anyways, Meltzer adds, uh, the only thing we were told is that the idea was to create a fan groundswell for Rhodes and try and create a Daniel Bryan-like situation. And clearly that is exactly what happened. The idea was that he earned the title shot and was getting screwed out of it until in the end he wound up with it. Rhodes going on SmackDown and indicating he wasn't going to take the shot did make for a very inconsistent storyline, especially since it was clear by the next day he was getting the shot and the company was encouraging it. Let's let's pause there, Larson, yeah. because I want to bring this point up really quick. I know you got something on your mind. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can think of, whatever the main event, and this is they're playing with fire at some point. Whatever the main event was eventually going to be, whether it's night one and night two or just night two where they're loading up everything in that one night. Yeah. I I personally feel that was always the plan, but maybe the story beat changed after the SmackDown segment and they had to pivot with how they approach the press event. But I find it difficult to believe that they would have Rock versus Roman be the thing and then see the backlash and go, oh, no, we're not going to do Rock versus Romans. That's too big of a deal for them to change yeah. to Rhodes versus Reigns. Do you agree? or what's No, your take I understand that? that completely unless the idea is. Let me get this thought out real quick and I'll address that. One thing they absolutely positively must do, whether it's tonight on SmackDown, Monday night on Raw, is Cody needs to come to the ring and state what The Rock told him when Cody sought his counsel. He alluded to that at the press event. Oh, we had a wonderful conversation. But something about how Rock presented himself and the case he was making for why Roman versus Rock was the Mania match seemed to piss off Cody. Mm-hmm, yeah. We need to know what The Rock told Cody. That is kind of like the missing piece in this right now to make this all make sense. I don't disagree that it would be I can meet you halfway on that way and that it would be nice to know. I'm kind of, look, I, I I I understand from both points of view from what's real and what's and what's you know theatrics. What's real is potentially, potentially that there was a storyline pivot that yes, it would be nice to fill in that gap of story. Behind the scenes, it seems like maybe They did a thing that they weren't terribly happy with and realized, oh, this is the direction we need to go. We'll just sort of shove that under the rug. I mean, one way or the other, I think it would it would help illuminate why Cody came out. It would. So angry and and seemingly changed his mind. I think that's kind of at this joint, this joint, this juncture. Sorry. That's kind of the one major plot hole that needs to be addressed. Well, okay, but. If what Rock said, Rock was very firm. The Rock said he was very firm. He had that whole PowerPoint presentation and said, "This is the only family that matters," which seemed to be you the can ins- infer. You can infer that Cody. Well, Cody to straight Rock. up called it bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> he said, that Whoa. Cody talked to the Rock. You can infer this, obviously, obviously, but I feel like to make it clear, it'd probably be wise to do it. You can infer that Cody talked to the Rock, and the Rock said. The Rock said he made the case that if Cody wants to take everything from Roman, Mm -hmm. I, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, Mm -hmm. am the person. It's it's sort of of like when George Bush called up Dick Cheney. Hey, help me find a vice president. And Dick Cheney says, I'm your guy. You know, it it, it, it feels like that where The Rock said, The Rock um, said, uh, hey, if you want someone to take everything from The Rock, sure, you could take the title, Cody, but I'm the only one that could take the head of the table from it. Cody's like, oh, all right. That makes (laughs) sense. Rock's charming. Yeah. He makes a a persuasive case here. Sure, Rock, I'll step aside and let you do that, only to find out the press event that The Rock is saying, essentially, this main event is going to solidify the bloodline Mm -hmm. as the royal family professional wrestling. I think think there's, you can, I think you can, I personally, I think that if you need it spelled out, if you really want it spelled out, that's a great way to do it. I'm willing to sort of read between the lines and understand that Rock overstepped 
after a conversation where Cody maybe reluctantly stepped aside. And now he's like, wait a second, buddy, you're going too far saying this is the only royal family in wrestling. And I'm backtracking now. I'm going to go back into it. And and look, whether or not they they choose to 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 do, I think that would probably that would probably put a lid on people saying, oh, well, you know, they messed up on this particular story beat. You could totally retcon that, and you're absolutely, absolutely. right. Absolutely. Whether, whether it's a situation people view it as a plot hole or justification from a storyline perspective to retcon what happened on SmackDown, there's a gap there that I feel like some people might think, oh, they need to explain this. I want it. it I'll, I will say this. It'll be interesting to understand what storytelling uh, philosophy they adhere to going forward if they're going to need the if they're going to feel the need to do that or if they're just going to power through and be like look what's happened has happened they can infer what they want to infer um this is where we are now yeah um but yeah it for, it'll be interesting to see if they if they feel the need to do that yeah as for that would be not doing roman versus rock at the mania at this mania this year in some capacity let's read this this bit here from mike johnson mm-hmm. and uh we can address that because uh Oh, sorry, Dave Shear. My apologies. Dave Shear uh, had his own speculation on what's going to happen, saying, quote, Cody has the right to fight Roman and he exercises uh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. The the notes say Mike Johnson. I know. I I just I I went double check. Corrected. Okay. 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 Dave Shear. Yeah. All right. Make sure. Dave Shear. Uh, Cody has the right to fight Roman and he exercised it. That doesn't mean that there won't be more swerves along the way, but they set up the match that almost everyone wanted to see last night. I know some people are saying it uh, in a tag match where he teams with Roman versus Seth and Cody. As far as the Rock teaming with Roman against Seth and Cody. I don't see that one. To me, that doesn't put more struggle in Cody's fight. What does? Well, after Rock mentioned his seat on the board, the vibe I got immediately is that Rock will insert himself into Cody's journey and wrestle him to finish night one of Mania in the main event, of course, with the plan being to weaken Cody before he takes on Roman in night two. Cody has to wrestle on night one while Roman waits and is rested for night two. If Cody overcomes that, my God, still Dave Shear's uh, words here, what a finished story. People will be crying, and I'm not exaggerating in the slightest. I love that. Um, the, if Look, if if all parties came together, let me ask, let me ask you what you make of this, because it kind of relates. Uh, Brian Gewertz, Rock's right-hand man and, and mm-hmm. writer guy, mm-hmm. lead writer of Raw for 10, years, 10 really good years. Um posted an Instagram post with this on with with the events of last night and, and just said we're in for a ride chapter one mm-hmm. speculate for me is chapter one the press event and the book ends at Wrestlemania or is this a years long thing it could be it could be uh, getting back to the rock versus Roman match like there's ways they could go about doing it that could lead to it happening this year at Wrestlemania or Wrestlemania 41 or any time down the line you know say they have say they have the tag match night one and maybe one of the reasons they've had Roman dumping on Seth so much is because it's going to be Seth Cody Roman Rock night one in that tag match and if Roman Rock wins Roman gets put into the main event at night two or something like a rocket mm-hmm. put in the main event at night two, something like that. Mm-hmm. You have Seth pin Roman in that match. Mm-hmm. So there right away, world heavyweight championship. It's not the loser bracket anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night two. Now that Roman and rock lost, which instantly causes beef between the two of them that can motivate a match at any point down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody beats Roman for the universal title mm-hmm. finishes his story. Mm-hmm. So by doing that tag match, and, and, and you potentially elevate the World Heavyweight Championship mm-hmm. by having Seth pin Roman, mm-hmm. and then Cody finishes his story, mm-hmm. and based on the loss in the tag match, Ro- uh, Rock can put the blame squarely on Roman for losing that match and mm-hmm. want to have a match with him at any point down the line, whether it's Mania next year, two years from now, Saudi show, SummerSlam, wherever. One thing people have noted... I like that scenario. One thing people have noted is how Rock came off as, and he is, he is, he's, he is the, the elder. He is a high chief. Yeah. He is a high, and he's a legit high chief. Yeah. I think like, what was it? The King of Samoa uh, yeah. granted yep. him that title, which is yep. awesome. Um, but he did come off like the older brother of Roman Reigns' younger brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to wonder if that's going to be 
part of the Genesis. You know, Roman's thinking to himself, everything was hunky dory until you came around, Rock. I I beat this sucker last year. I could beat him again. Yep. And if Rock, the Rock says, if if that dynamic is the thing that comes into play. You know, we've seen with this sort of storytelling with the bloodline, Jay had his spotlight and Jimmy was in the background. Mm -hmm. Then Jimmy had the spotlight and Jay was on a different brand. I don't think this is going to be a situation where Roman is in the background, given that he's the guy until like I could see him in the background until he's tired of being in the background, which will be a story beat. And that could lead to the rock stuff. This, absolutely, this whole thing absolutely. is going to be Roman losing his title and blaming the rock. I kind of feel like yeah. that's going to be, well, here's a situation too. If the rock comes in and starts, you know, he's, he's a board member. He's got the title of high chief. He starts calling the shots in the bloodline. Now mm -hmm. Roman get resentful of that. Yeah. That alone could lead to a match between rock and Roman. And if you want to turn Roman face, mm -hmm. especially if the rock is, is going to really start leaning into the, the heel uh, aspect of things. You could, you could get, you can get a Roman face turn out of this too. Oh, absolutely. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. You you have rock drop Roman out of frustration and you've got yourself a turn there, you know, because that's the thing you paint, you paint Roman in a sympathetic light. Like, Man, Rock stealing a spotlight after Roman's been holding it down in a big picture way. Maybe not week to week, but in a big picture way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know, and Rock is of WB for the last three and a half, four years. Yeah, absolutely. right, exactly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I don't know. The, look, there's a ton of ways this can go. Given what we saw last night, man, I thought it, the, the smartest thing, the smartest moment from last night was that backstage confrontation. Like all the stuff on the stage was good. But the backstage confrontation with Triple H, that was good. That was when Rock does this shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's yeah. that's the good stuff. Well, it really set up the dynamic seemingly between Rock and Roman, mm -hmm. between Rock and Triple H, with that history going back thirty. With years. the history added to you it, you know, I where mean, the, yeah. the Rock's coming in as 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 not just board member, but now presumptive leader of the bloodline at this point based on how mm -hmm. he and Roman were interacting, how rock was the one to step up to Cody, not Roman. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, the rock feels like he's got all the power right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're playing into that. Um, and to see how he exercises that power in terms of the story they're telling is going to be interesting. Let me ask you this. Sure. So going, going back to my point about going back to my point about, let's say the main event was always going to be the main event, whatever that is. Yeah. Let's assume right now it's Cody Roman because they're trying yeah. to get uh, this whole thing. They're orchestrating this whole thing to get Cody over in a massive way. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think Rock is a thousand percent on board with that. If that's the end goal, what is it? What do you think the original purpose of Cody saying it's not going to be at WrestleMania? Was it to was that the plan? Was it? Cody's going to say he's not going to do it at WrestleMania with the fan base thinking that backstage he's being forced into doing this in a shitty story beat, basically. Yeah. Do you think that was the original plan or was it a story beat that they told and realized that didn't work the way we wanted it to work? Let's go ahead and pivot in a different I way. I mean, it could be it could be both those things where they thought maybe just the way it came across on Friday wasn't as strong as they had hoped it would oh maybe huh you know where where cody's performance was a bit too subdued to get the idea that the rock came in to talk to cody and instead of maybe uh, uh laying out a case to him to get the position only to essentially swerve him mm -hmm. it was essentially a, a situation where the rock kind of as t as board member muscled his way into the main event of wrestlemania mm -hmm. and yeah. cody not feeling like he could do much about it mm -hmm. having to step aside mm -hmm. yeah um, you know, there's aspects of Cody's performance where you could say, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense if that was the story they were going to tell, but not so much in how his promo was delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if he made it, made it, even alluded to it stronger, I'm in a position where I have to step aside or, mm -hmm. or, or my hand is being forced here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe it would have been clear. Yeah. You know, it could have been that was the plan from Friday. 
but just in terms of how it was presented, it wasn't clear enough. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, yeah. I wish they wouldn't beep out shit. <laughs> there was a lot of bullshits, and I think it would have been more impactful if we got to hear those. Maybe That's when they a, go to Netflix, they'll, 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 they won't beep those out. That'd be nice. You know, they were on YouTube and Peacock last night. You're allowed to say things on YouTube and Peacock shit. See, I said it right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they missed some of them. They did miss the some of them. Bit. They missed some of the shits, but they were trying. They were trying. They were trying uh, very much. So, so. Uh, so yeah, man. I, I think that it's a it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where else is taking. It, it's gotten everybody's attention, and I think it's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we continue on with this show, uh, wanted to point this out really quick. Of course, with all the intrigue in WrestleMania, a lot more people are heading over here to this particular channel, finding us. Shout out to the Philip DeFranco show for uh, tossing in a couple uh, quick bits of you and I. Uh, So thanks for that. A lot of people earlier in the week, we did a couple episodes uh, of the show in person. Um, And as much as we enjoy doing that, we have a whole channel where we do that. We can't always do it here for the podcast because of convenience, to be honest with you. But Friendo Club Wrestling, we've got a whole channel full of fun, short form content. Me and Larson get together once a week and we shoot a bunch of stuff today. We dropped a new episode of Guessing Dave Meltzer's Star Ratings Retro Edition where uh, Larson's in the hot seat and he has to guess the star ratings for five different matches from the past. And uh, that's always a lot of fun because we get to I always love the historical aspect of it. You yeah. know, yeah. doing the research for that, even if I only have 20 minutes to do the research, it always takes me on a bit of a mini uh, a rabbit hole down Dave Meltzer's uh, Wrestling Observer newsletter. It, it, it does. And, 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 and hearing Dave's little asides, you know, in the course of breaking down or commenting on a match from however long ago, not very it's not very rare. He'll drop a reference to something. It's a fun time capsule. It can be, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so be sure to check out the Friendo Club Wrestling channel. Also, we've got merchandise right now. We're celebrating our 10th year anniversary of going in raw. At friendoshop.com, you can use promo code FRIENDO2024 to get the latest wrestling merchandise, including uh, this hat mm-hmm. right here. Whoop it! It's Friendo Club hat. It's got the old Attitude Era Raw type logo, but it says Friendo Club instead. Uh, got a bunch of stuff over there. Also, some Wrestle Juice merch, some Friendo Club merch, and some Going in Raw merch. Uh, we're also on the road to the next subscriber count palindrome of two hundred and one thousand one hundred and two subs. Right now, we're at two hundred thousand five hundred twenty nine. So we are quickly approaching that number. Of course, we still owe the good people a short film. Feature Larson. film, yeah, yeah. We got to start brainstorming what feature film we're going to make. A short film featured on our YouTube channel. I think that's what you mean, of course. Uh, so if you haven't already and you enjoy what you're hearing right here at Going In Raw, hit that subscribe button, hit the notify bell. If you're listening to this in the audio realm, do us a solid. Leave us a rating, review, or a comment. It really does help push Going In Raw in that algorithm. Uh, also, we've got uh, the Friendo Club setup, which is uh, an uh, avenue towards getting bonus episodes access to our question threads for all the shows, and of course, access to our monthly Big Blue Predictions Challenge. Right now, Cameron Schenk is the Big Blue Predictions Champion, and he won that at the Royal Rumble. Coming up is the next week of champions. We'll be doing a big two-event predictions challenge, and that's going to be AEW Revolution right before that WWE Elimination Chamber. So if you want to participate that and become the new Big Blue Predictions Champion here at Going In Raw, then there's two ways to get the Friendo Club set up. First up, by clicking join right here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson or by going to the patreon.com slash Steve and Larson and clicking on the Friendo Club setup. Each one is $5 a month. And uh, both those are ways to get the Friendo Club set up, Larson. Indeed. So, um, before we move on, I wanted to point this out. We're about to turn to some more serious matters here on the show. The very real allegations against Vince McMahon and the WWE. So, for any viewers that may be triggered by talk about sexual abuse and harassment, we invite you to skip ahead to the next section of the show. Maybe go to a different video mm-hmm. um, to, to you know, help make sure your mental health stays in place. Yeah. Uh, we'll place timestamps on the YouTube version of the show. I know the audio version of the show, I'm not sure exactly how accurate the timestamps would be given the ad situation that yeah, precedes the show. Yeah, that'd be a little bit different. Yeah. But we'll do our best to go ahead and, and, and give you guys some timestamps there as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's your, that's, your, that's your polite warning 
that we're going to talk about some heavy stuff right now. Yeah, we are. So uh, the late Ashley Massaro, who was a WWE superstar from 2005-2008, detailed additional misconduct allegations against Vince McMahon, a previously unreleased statement given before she passed away in 2019. Uh, Vice News obtained the statement from lawyers who represented former WWE talents, including Massaro, in a lawsuit seeking damages from WWE as a result of traumatic brain injuries suffered while working for the company. So, the statement reads, quote, During my time with the WWE, I had observed Vince McMahon making out with other divas in the locker room, but he never paid attention to me, and I assumed I was not his type. This changed after my Playboy cover was released. I was fortunate enough to be allowed to fly in the company jet stay at the same hotels as the executives for a period of time so that I could get home faster to spend more time with my daughter. On one of those occasions, Vince was attempting to get me alone with him in his hotel room late at night, and I felt extraordinarily uncomfortable. He began calling the hotel room phone and my cell phone nonstop. I called Kevin Dunn to explain the situation, and he said I should tell Vince I was not feeling well and would see him on TV the next day, so I did. Immediately after that night, Vince started writing my promos for me. Vince does not write promos for female wrestlers. That is the job of the creative department. And he certainly wouldn't have, under any normal circumstances, written a promo for me. But he did, and the promos were written with the clear intention of ruining my career. I brought the first script Vince wrote to me to the WB employee in charge of creative at the time, Michael Hayes. And he said, you're not saying this. Who the expletive wrote this? And I told him that Vince did. He said, well, kid, these are the breaks meaning that Vince wanted to end my career and destroy my reputation on my way out. He is known for this type of behavior and also did this to name redacted upon her departure from WB. In addition, after that night, each time I walked by him, he would make vulgar sexual comments that were clearly designed to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, that sort of speaks for itself. Um, Pretty awful stuff right there. Uh, During an interview with Slate, Bret Hart, Uh, was asked about the Vince allegations, to which he answered, I'm going to speak my truth. I'm not worried about Vince's feelings. He never cared about mine. I don't have any problem with everybody kicking his head around in the parking lot. I'm okay with the truth coming out. I don't think this is the only incident of this kind of predatory behavior. I think you'll find it's everywhere in WWE. I always had a respect for him. Now it's tainted. I'm embarrassed that I thought so highly of him. Brett later added via text message, I think, despite all of the issues I ever had with Vince, I know deep down I always respected him. But now, knowing what kind of weirdo he became, I have absolutely zero respect for him. I do not think I could ever shake his hand if he extended it too creepy. Uh, In that same interview, Hart stated that he was, quote, warned by fellow wrestling insiders a few months ago that McMahon was in big trouble, that he wasn't going to be able to sweep under the rug. So we'll pause there. Seth Rollins also had some more to say about that. We'll get to that mm-hmm. in a second. But um, that seems to be the general sentiment out there right now is that there's going to be more. I'm sorry, I should say this. There's a lot more, whether or not that sees the light of day remains to be seen. But it, it honestly sounds like what we already know, which is horrific enough, mm-hmm. might just be the tip of the iceberg, mm-hmm. so to speak. And uh, if the full width and breadth of what he did comes out, it could be it could be really, really bad. It could be. Yeah. Yeah, it really could be. It really could be. Um, while speaking to Fightful Sean Ross Sapp, current WB World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, uh, discussed the Vince allegation, saying the following. It's a crap situation. I said in that interview on Radio Row, it sucks. It's horrible. It's disgusting. I don't like hearing about it, reading about it. It's abhorrent. I hope if the allegations are accurate, I hope everybody, or sorry, anybody involved with it gets what's coming to them. It sucks. For me, it's very difficult because I didn't see that side of them. I didn't experience that. When you see stuff like that, it's jarring and it's painful. It sucks all around. There's just no other way to say it. It sucks. It really sucks. And again, it's just it's further echoing that whatever elements of that era that remain in WWE need to be excised from the yep. company. They need to yep. be gone. And yep. um, hopefully they will do that sooner than later. You know, yep. I have no doubt that, you know, I'd, I, I, I'll put it this way. I'm sorry. I'd like to think that Endeavor is taking this incredibly seriously and they are doing what they can to be proactive in getting rid of those elements from the company, even if everybody's on their best behavior now. 
that doesn't matter. Those if those elements are still there, they need to be gone. They need to go. They need to be gone. And, uh, yep. and I'm not really sure what more needs to be said. We'll obviously keep monitoring the situation and keeping it out there because I know a lot of people are excited, including us. We're excited about WrestleMania, but it's hard to be excited about something when you know that there is a dangerous element to the wrestlers in this company, and there mm -hmm. has been for decades now, and it sucks that nobody ever did anything about it. Yep, exactly. Um, exactly. Let's do this because we always forget. We always forget the SmackDown preview because oh, we do, do the questions, questions and then we just stop the show. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll go ahead and answer. I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and do the SmackDown preview now. Um, All right. Uh, First thing here says Triple H will address the fallout from the WrestleMania 40 kickoff press conference. I thought it was a press event. So he's uh, he's already, you know, noted on his Instagram, which hey, did you notice that the small detail on the, uh, the 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 poster for that match refers to Roman Reigns as WWE champion, yeah, not undisputed that. universal I saw champion. That. LA Knight makes changes. Yeah. Uh, but evidently he doesn't care about that match. <laughs> I saw that as a yeah. quote from him. He doesn't care about that. No, yeah, he's not in it. Doesn't care. About I'm it. not in it. Doesn't matter. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so he's going to address the, what happened there. He's already said that match is official. Do you think there's going to be a wrinkle? I, I kind of feel like board of directors rock is going to step in at some point and say, you know, this match is butt cheek smell. We're going yeah. in a different direction. It's going to be a bit of an on-screen power struggle. You'd think so, given you know the the the, the altercation backstage following the press event, mm -hmm. where The Rock, mm -hmm. you know, tells Triple H, "You need to fix this," yeah. implying you need to get Cody out of this match so Rowan and I can have the match. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I fully expect some sort of power struggle to ensue on camera, whether it starts tonight, whether Cody uh, comes to the ring to address his side of things. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Ooh, what about this? Mm. What about this? As a TKO board of directors guy, The Rock removes Triple H from power, Ooh. and in his place, Adam Pierce, <laughs> who's an absolute mess. Yeah. He's not going to do all this because all this can't stand Roman Reigns. <laughs> no. no, nope, nope. Uh, and nope. Adam, every week, Adam Pierce has to take directives from The Rock, and he's like, "That wasn't part of the deal." And Rock, of course, says, "Pray I don't alter it further." Yeah. The Rock says. <laughs> The Rock says the deal's changed. Pray I don't alter it further. Uh, oh. Next here, uh, Bailey talks about her departure from damage control. Man, we got to get Bailey on that WrestleMania poster, I man. I know. Why what wasn't the... she at the press event last night? You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I agree. I agree. She totally should have been. She won the Rumble. But, but given that, like, they really, like, I, I kind of get, you know, EO versus Bailey is by far, like, the best story. But Rhea versus Becky, I kind of get like they just threw a bunch of people out there with well, a high profile. I, th I think to a degree what they did was have people have wrestlers appear whose WrestleMania matches aren't solidified yet. Bailey versus Io was booked. They got the graphic for it. And maybe that was the, the logic behind including who they did and not including other uh, uh, superstars. Don't know. I kind of wonder if it was just like Bianca's got the who she's got the big show she's right promoting now. The, her show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And she's all and they're promoting her as like, you know, the face of the women's division. And then, you know, Rhea and Becky, they're both bigger names, I think, or at least Becky is a bigger name than the EO Bailey. I mean, a lot of people weren't there, um, but uh, man, they really need to they really need to. Give more that focus give, on that story. Yeah, give that story the respect it deserves because Absolutely. that segment last week was really good. <laughs> Goosebumps. I'm gonna start. Hey man, I'm gonna start using that. I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna go to Costco, get one of them hot do. dogs. <laughs> See this? That's how excited I am for this dollar fifty hot dog and soda. See this, Kirkland? <laughs> exactly. Big pop. <laughs> Huge pop. Uh, <laughs> Pete Dunn and Tyler Bates square off against Champ and Gargano for the right to challenge Judgment Day at Elimination Chamber. So Champ and confirmed. Gargano, exactly. No pop. No pop. Uh, they confirmed tag title match happened at the chamber. So uh, you got to expect uh, Peter Dew and Tyler Bates probably to win that one. I would think so. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. We are not going to win. We are. Bianca Belair takes on Meechin in Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Ooh. That'd be a good one. That'd be really good. I know who's going to win that one, though. Yeah, and it ain't me, Chin. Yeah, Bianca's going to win that one. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, that's going to be good stuff. All right. Would you like to answer some questions? Let's answer some questions. Alex Let's Foster here says, questions. at this point, does it feel obvious that Cody is winning? What could be done to make it more interesting? I think it's been pretty obvious that Cody was going to win ever since he won the, excuse me, the Rumble. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If not much prior, what they're doing now to try to put obstacles in his way to get into that main event at Mania is what's going to put doubt in your mind. Dude, Rock's a long gamer. I don't know that Cody's winning this year. He might win next year. I don't know. Maybe he'll win in Saudi Arabia or Madison Square Garden or Action Coast Wrestling. I don't know when he's going to win. What if what if, what if, if Dave Shearer's correct and they do Cody Rock night one or the Rock wins and we get Rock Roman? Ooh, that's, a, that's a bit much right there, man. I don't know if the people are going to be into that. <laughs> I don't know. Boy, I don't know. If they do Rock Cody night one, and and Cody beats The Rock, number one, I don't think that's how it's going to go down because I think that's sort of a foregone conclusion. Cody's going to beat Rock, and it'll be Cody Roman, and that's like there. Rock's going to be like, hey, the way we get this dude to be the next Cena, basically, or the next Rock is uh, – I like some people saying this would be wildly hilarious. Night two. So my right now my thinking is this. Rock, Roman are aligned, but when it comes down to it, Rock's going to end up helping Cody against Roman mm. uh, because, like, you know, he's going to be a double agent or something like that. I do like, I do love that people are, th- there are some people out there saying, hey, man, what if it's Rock uh, in Roman's corner? And then when Rock tries to interfere with it, Stone Cold Steve Austin comes too. out. Like, where is he coming from? I Why? What? He too. just, the, 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 the uh, broken skull signal sh- shines in the sky or something. I mean, something? Stone Cold lives in the. Uh, oh no, never mind. Sorry. I say Stone Cold lives in Nevada, but, but WrestleMania is in Philadelphia. Never mind. I got confused yeah, with the yeah. press event being in Vegas last night. Yeah, 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 yeah it doesn't yeah, make right. any sense. Yeah. Does he, no, does he rent rent property at 316 Gimmick Street in Philly? Does 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 Austin even like uh, Dusty? Did he get along with Dusty? I don't know that he did, don't, man. Don't know. Don't know. I don't know that he don't did. Know. I know if it was uh, Jeff Jarrett, he wouldn't come to his aid, man. No. Imagine if Stone Cold had property, rental property, 316 Gimmick Street, Philadelphia, PA. Oh, hell yeah. Didn't, uh, did Jeff Jarrett do a broken skull? What's the check? I don't know. Maybe people just wanted that. I know I wanted that. Let me see if oh, that happened. Yeah. Broken skull sessions, Jeff Jarrett. Not Jeff Hardy. Jeff Jarrett. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at that. I got, I'm got. i going to watch that today. Oh, my God. That's 52 minutes. That sounds amazing. That sounds great. Uh, Dakota Ham says, are we getting a tag match between Rock and Roman versus Seth and Cody? Are we getting Rock and Cody one, one night, Roman and Cody the other? What do you guys think? I did see some some talk on social medias about the tag match, Rock, Roman versus Seth, Cody being kind of a winner-take-all deal, where if Rock, Roman wins, then Rock would be the new world heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. And if Seth Cody won, then Cody would win Roman's. But you'd assume Cody have to pin Roman to actually yeah, get that, right. or Rock yeah. would have to pin Seth to get that. Let me ask you this: How do they get? Because one of the biggest complaints, and I agree with it, is that Seth kind of looked like a bystander last night. How do they get him back on track? He's got to pin Roman Reigns, man. Oh wow, that big, huh? That's what I'm saying. If they do the tag match, night one, Seth pins Roman. You don't think he could just they could just do a thing where like Seth shows up on Raw Monday and is like, man, what a mess that was. Well, Cody's out of the picture. Drew McIntyre, oh, come on down. The, 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 Roman's gone out of his way for two appearances in a row to make Seth look like an absolute chump. Oh, more There's than a chump. There's got to be Larson. an end game to this. He called him a bum. A bum. Says, get this bum out of here. <laughs> get this bum out of here. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love Roman Reigns. Uh, uh, oh, this is a great question. Elemental right. Giant says, what other work shoot angles do you wish had a press event? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Imagine if CM Punk, instead of doing the pipe bomb on the stage, called a press conference. Ooh. It had, you know, he had Spindrift. like a PowerPoint presentation with evidence for all oh, the wow. claims he was making. Dude, I loved, I, somebody pointed out in the uh, post show, when uh, Cody, uh, when CM Punk was on a roll, and he says, uh, "Who wants to see? Who wants to see Cody punch Rock in the face?" And in the background, you could see Rock turn over and be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I know. 
I know. Oh, CM Punk was on a roll last night. I'm so bummed out he was injured because, you know, he would have been involved in this somehow. Oh, yeah, somehow. Somehow, some way. Oh, that could have been good. Uh, Keyshawn Cook says, The Rock said. The Rock said. He would smack Cody's teeth down his throat if he ever talked about his family again. Steve, mm-hmm. what, would it ha- what would have to have to be said to make you smack Lars's teeth down his throat and vice versa? Oh, I thought it would have been uh, me slapping Cody. Oh, but you? Oh, man. Dude, I don't Are know. Are you more I... likely to slap in the face, me or Cody? It's got to be me. Nah, bro. It's Cody. I don't think there's anything you could say that wouldn't. Like, the worst you could do, I think, like, sort of, that's realistic anyways. Like, you're not going to have an, you know, you're not going to change, like, all of a sudden being a total scumbag. The worst I think you could do is cause me to give you a very disappointed look and walk away and say, this isn't going to work anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd slap. There's nothing you could do is going to slap me in the face. If Cody Rhodes, if I said, uh, if Steve said, uh, Cody, what's your what's your favorite Star Trek property? And he said, Enterprise. Oh, I'd smack him. Oof. Yeah, I'd probably Oof. try to drop him all the pedigree, but wow. then my knees would blow out. I'd yeah. throw up the X. <laughs> Yeah, you'd throw up your own X, wouldn't you? I'd throw up my own X, man, yeah. Ah. If he was like, he was like, oh, man, Captain Archer's my jam. I'd be like, the fuck? I'd agree. But no Pedigree. blowing out knees. X. Uh, Cameron Bordelazzo said, says, since Rock is treating Roman as little brother, when Roman ultimately turns on him, who will get the support of the crowd? Depending how they, they, they do it, could easily be Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Black Stranger 215 says, you enjoying the ride? Hell yeah, man. Numbers are up. Revenue's up. Intrigue is up. Yeah. It's got yeah, people man. talking and interested interested about what's going on. So that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's I can't complain about that, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, MHJ is here, says, I don't want to r- want to risk Rollins too much by having the suggested tag match with him and Cody versus Rock Roman. Would Orton be a suitable replacement? He has history with all involved in Triple H could go to him as a legend killer and try to take out rock. If things escalate between them, given all the trash talk that Roman has done to Seth lately, it has to be Seth. Yeah. Has to be Seth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see anybody else entering the the picture this late in the game. Well, not late in the game, but like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think they're going to rope anybody. in. There's a reason they had Seth stay up there for that whole segment. I'm just waiting to see what it is. And I'm sure it's not just for Roman to dump all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty big pop. <laughs> he always says that now. Pretty oh, big I pop. Know. That got under his skin. It did. <laughs> uh, Dominican King says, could Tony let WWE borrow Dustin for this story, family versus family? Be I mean, I do not want to see Dustin out there wrestling, dude. Maybe in his corner. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I would think in his corner maybe, yeah. But Tony's not going to let that happen. Mm. Not it, bro. Come I'd be on. surprised, but I wouldn't say. I'm going to say never. If Dustin went and, and, and asked him and, and talked to him about it, I think Tony Khan would listen. Let's say he would do it, but he would listen. I'm not going to put up with this shit. I'm not. Did you see? Did you see how many other like Resley even Swerve like uh, put up a little uh, a little uh, a tweet of, mm-hmm. of 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 support for the angle last night? Mm-hmm. Santana did too, and <laughs> his quote replies were really rude. Oh um, my goodness. Let's see here. Blind Math says, what will be done with the men's chamber if Rollins is part of a four-way with Cody Rock and Roman? I don't think it's going to be a four-way. It could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be a four-way match. Or a tag. It could be a tag night one, and then Seth will defend the, yeah, but the, the question title is, night two. Yeah. Oh, against against like whoever wins the whoever chamber? Whoever wins the men's chamber match. If it's Drew, if it's Sammy, Drew, whoever. Drew. Here's another idea. If they do want to do Rock Roman night one as the main event, and have Cody have a match as well, so it's not like he's going to night two with an advantage. Have Cody face Drew, because they had that thing on Raw where Drew beat him down, looked at the Mania sign. Mm. And so both Cody and Roman have matches night one and night two. This is what you should do. What? You do Cody-Drew to open the show, and then Cody in a tag match later on in the show. And then to open up night two, you have Cody versus Seth for the World Heavyweight Championship. Cody wins that, and then he faces Roman in the main event. It's too much, man. No, I mean honestly, it's not enough Cody to be, you know, it's too much. 
uh, Toe T O F Ken says, "Is it possible what happened at the press conference leads to Rock versus Seth for the heavyweight title?" I don't see that happening. I'd be surprised. I'd be pretty surprised. I'd be uh, surprised. A lot of these questions here on the YouTube are sort of already echoing things we've talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So same here I on don't, the Patreon. Yeah. So um, if we don't read those questions, it's because we're already covered. Yeah, yeah. We've we've covered a lot of the a lot of it in our conversations prior to the questions. Segment. Uh, Just a hippo says, "Is heel rock best rock? If what we're getting, if last night what we saw from the rock was a glimpse of what he's going to do over the next couple months, that's best rock. I think so because it's different than what he's done in the past, and it's not a heel. It's not heel rock. It's rock who who is trying to get some business taken care of. It's corporate rock. He, it's corporate rock, and you gotta you gotta break some eggs out there. You know what I mean? It's trying to make a WrestleMania omelet." Uh, Blake Whitehouse says, what would your pitch to Scott Demore for him to join ACWB? Oh, wow. I mean, he, wanted, him... he wanted to own and run a wrestling promotion. Guess what? <laughs> I would, uh, you know, I'd send him a nice video package of Sacramento. Or I guess Pacheco. Now this is what we're running out of. <laughs> I'd send him a Pacheco video package. <laughs> Oh man, Scott! Hey, Scott Demore, can you can you come take over ACW? Get book us in the Orangevale Community Center across the there street. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, this is a great question, John. John and Alistair Voice always has good questions. John, if Roman to roast were to roast you like he did Seth, what would he say about you guys? Oh wow! Oh, Stephen Larson, you're not even the number three podcast. Oh. You go on the the the, uh, the Apple Podcast ratings. Yeah, right. Ah, oh, I gotta keep scrolling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Solid Monster number eight. You're number twenty one. Couple of bums in this podcasting game, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to Chartable. Where are we on Chartable? I want to see. Right oh man, now. I haven't heard that heard that in a while. Chartable Pro Wrestling. Wrestling Chartable. Yeah, the Solid Monster was pretty high on there the other day. Oh, good for Solid Monster. Solid Monster is great. Oh, dude, he's great. Get out of here. Oh, man, look at this, though. Oh, pff. guess what now? Huh. Solid Monster's number 22, and we're number 13. Oh, wow. Take that, Jason. <laughs> hey, no, Solid Monster's legit. He's the guy. Yeah. Now, check this out, though, man. Listen to this. What the fuck is this? What is perched on the top podcast? What is I'm this? Familiar one? with that show? Hey, good for them. That's cool. I don't know what that is, but they're pretty high up there. Um, what what is this? They're number four. So check this out. We are in terms of wrestling podcasts. Yeah, that do not feature a wrestler on the show yeah, or a former hosted. wrestling yeah. personality. Yeah. So no yeah. cornet, no busted open. Cornette's number two and three. I don't know who perched on the top rope is, who's but they're one? they're who's number one. Well, Busted they're open? in terms of our type podcast. No, no, the overall, overall, who's number? Oh, one? Oh, it open. Okay, they got serious money. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not just, talking I'm about. Curious. I'm talking I, about the company. I imagined. Anyways, continue. Sorry, Busted Open's number one. Cornette and Cornette are two and three. Whoever this perched on the top is perched on the top rope is a number four. So they might be. The, the Tribal Chief setup of fan-based podcasts. I don't know who they Could are. Be. Bischoff is next. Chris Van Vliet. He's not a wrestler, but he's got a lot of great interviews with wrestlers. Is number six. Pritchard's number seven. Stone Cold Steve Austin is number eight. Oh, man. Grilling JR is number nine. My World with Jeff Jarrett is number 10. Talk is Jericho, number 11. Our good friend. Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful is number 12. And number 13, Lucky 13, is going in Raw, baby. Hey, look at that. So in terms of like podcasts that don't feature a wrestler but talk about wrestling, we're like number three, basically. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. And then after that, number 14, we're all above these guys. Kevin Nash, uh, Sam Roberts. Uh, the, what is this? What happened when is a Shivani, I think. Yeah. Then is what culture? Then is Flow Wrestling Radio Live, Folius Pod, Chael Sonnen, our, our boys over at Deadlock. I think those dudes drop once a week, though. And then Solomonster Monster after that. And then two, uh, then uh, is uh, Keeping It 100 with Conan. And then is uh, Post Wrestling, our friends over at Post Wrestling. So, yeah, man. Big pop for us. Cool. 
cool, cool beans, man. Cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I'm trying to look at some of the what is perched on the top rope. I am curious about this now. Yeah, I was trying to find some information on it too. Lee and Justin. Who do you think they are? I don't know. Just incredible and uh, Lee Moriarty. <laughs> what an odd pair that is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're cool. They're number four right now. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah. Is that it for the show? That's what we got. That's what we got. And that's what it is. Anyways, that's going to do it. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And until next time, we'll see you around. Goodbye. <laughs>